I purchased the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro on launch day since I was so pleased with the standard Galaxy Buds 2. I've tested them in all sorts of environments and have even discovered two cool little hacks I'll share towards the end of the video to improve your overall experience with the Buds 2 Pro. I'll also share my long-term thoughts using the earphones with my Galaxy S23 Ultra daily driven phone. In terms of the fit and the finish of the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, they now have a matte design, so it is a lot grippier and I find that it slips around a lot less when I'm pulling it out of my pocket or pulling it out of a bag of some sort. Now they are also reduced in size by about 15% compared to last year's model. That just means that the fit is sleeker and slimmer overall and fits a lot more flush in your ear. If you're looking at someone heads on, it almost looks like you have nothing in your ear until you kind of turn to the side. That is not the case with the previous Pro Buds or the specific Buds 2 here. Because of this matte texture, the marks are a little bit more visible on the matte case versus the glossy case. Therefore, I'll recommend a case protector. They make some pretty cool ones and they're relatively inexpensive, but if you're worried about that, it's a good option. So in terms of the actual ergonomic fit in your ear, these fit super well. I've actually never had a problem even with my Buds 2, which are a little heavier and bigger. I've never had them fall out. You know, whatever I seem to do, I just can't shake them out. But I would say that in general, I kind of readjust them maybe every 30 minutes or so when I'm wearing them while I'm working out or just kind of walking around. It will be interesting to see if they add the wingtip design that they used to have on old generations of Buds, like the wingtips on the Buds FE that they announced a couple weeks ago at their Unpacked event. The nice thing about the black case and black buds is that it really doesn't show dirt or grime or earwax. While I do kind of clean them every month or every two months, the white buds here, they just show everything and these I have to clean like every couple weeks or else they just really start to look kind of gross and disgusting. So just note that they do make a, uh, a purple version, which is called Bora Purple, and they make the graphite version, which is this, and then they make the white version as well. This video is launching around Prime Day, so I'll link the buds below. They do typically go on sale. I saw them today at 178, discounted from 230, and I've seen them actually a little bit lower too, in the 150 range. You can certainly buy them refurbished, which I'll put links to as well. And then you're getting into the 120, 130 range if you're buying recertified or refurbished ones. In terms of the audio quality, the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro now have Bluetooth 5.3, which results in really rock solid connection. Never had any dropouts here. One of the biggest marketed features that Samsung kind of put into this device was the 24-bit audio that can be upscaled from 16-bit to 24-bit assuming that you have a Samsung device that can do that. It's a SSC, so it's Samsung Seamless Codec, and this feature works very well, and I really attribute the increase in audio quality to SSC, where it upsamples 16-bit to 24-bit. Also, when I use my S23 Ultra, if I play FLAC samples that are actually 24-bit native, these sound incredible and they're probably one of the closest experiences I've had to my wired headphones and DAC, the Shanling Q1 and the Shanling AE3 headphones, which pair super well together. I've done videos on those if you'd like to check that out. These are the first buds I think they've really marketed as studio buds. So they have some artists that they put some promo videos out. I could actually see these being used in the studio. While IEMs are typically the standard and I would think would be just better in general, if you were in a pinch, I think you probably could use these. That's how good the sound is. The 360 audio, in my opinion, is kind of a gimmick. It does add more volume in general, but the head tracking just is very odd. It's like very positionally directed. So if you move at all, it's you're kind of like the source is right here and it's just a strange experience overall. I wouldn't recommend that. Compared to the Buds Pro or the Buds 2, there is more of a bass presence here and I think that just comes down to the better fit of the device in your ear. Now, I was telling you about some hacks in the beginning. One of them is actually getting foam tips 
So those will provide better passive isolation and will provide better bass response, partially because of blocking external sound better and creating a better kind of resonance chamber, but also because they go deeper into the ear canal. So I'll link some of those below. Those are, are kind of cool options. By default in the box, they only offer two other tips. So there's like a small, a medium, and a large, and a USB-C cable, that's it. Besides the WF-1000XM5s from Sony, these are probably some of the best wireless headphones that I've heard. And while I've tried those, I kind of stuck with these because I do have an S23 Ultra and the integration of the ecosystem is just that good. So for some really good news, when enabling transparency, the Galaxy Buds 2, for example, are just terrible. They have constant wind noise. These are actually the first buds besides the world's first wireless headphones, the Bragi Dash, which I reviewed, I'll put up here for you. Those had a wind transparency feature and it was quite good. Actually, some of the best, I've never seen anything surpass it yet, but the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro come really close. They take a second for the algorithm to pick up the wind noise and then cut out the actual kind of buffeting that it causes in the microphone holes. But I can actually bike ride with these, which I can't say about many wireless headphones. Speaking of transparency, the voice detection in these is actually decent. It detects your voice very well, but I personally think that this should have been kept in the labs feature because if you're someone that sings, let's be honest, most of us kind of sing along to songs sometimes, it will activate and it just ends up being more of a nuisance than it is helpful. I like the ability in the app to disable the touch controls. So sometimes if I'm outside and I have like a rain jacket on, when you put these in your ear, if the rain jacket gets wet, the capacitive kind of touch on the device will trigger transparency or it'll like stop and play your song. So it's nice to actually be able to disable those. Speaking of other features in the app, the ability to pair with smart things and find your buds is nice. Also one of the features I enjoy is the neck stretch reminder. So if you, if you kind of just are in a bad posture, it will remind you. And let's be honest, most of us don't have good posture, so that's kind of a useful feature. In terms of the EQ options, there's a good amount of modes. I prefer the dynamic one myself, but depending on what I'm listening on, I would like to have the feature of a full custom EQ. It's really odd that they show the EQ graph in the app, but don't give you the option to customize it completely the way you want. That would just be a really easy software push. Like Bose, when the QC45s, I reviewed those, when those came out, they didn't have that feature, and then six months later, they added the EQ option. So uh, hopefully, maybe, I mean, it's already been a year plus, but maybe Samsung could add that someday. The gaming mode is pretty good. It, because these have 5.3, I really don't notice much latency in general. The gaming mode does improve it a little bit and is kind of cool when you're playing games or if you're, I don't know, in a car that has an older Bluetooth system, if you enable that, you'll get slightly better response. Now for one of the other little tricks in the labs part of the app, they have a double tap feature where you're supposed to like kind of double tap the bottom of the bud. But honestly, if you just double tap your like kind of upper cheek here or on this side, if you have a button here, that will lower the volume and increase the volume. And it works really well. Like 99% of the time when I double tap, it uh, kind of does that feature. So that's actually a feature that's in labs and has been for a little bit that I think could be a main feature. The battery's uh, pretty rock solid in my opinion. Some people have complained about it, but it's five hours with active noise canceling, eight hours without. I've never been in a situation where I need more than that. And one of the cool things is it does have wireless charging. I have the S23, so if I just pop it on the back, I can charge it right away, and it charges up decently quickly. This has saved me multiple times where my phone's juiced up and I can pass over some charge to the headphones and not be without buds. I'm actually working on a long-term review of this S23 Ultra, which is my daily driver. So if you'd like to see that, stay tuned.